Ladies and gentlemen, the person you see in front of you is one Ronnie Bennett. There were Good two, morning. There'd be two Ronnie Bennetts there if my eyes were not so correct now since I got my conjunctivitis taken care of. Oh, but you anyway. can see better now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. It's much clearer. Much clearer. So, uh, anyway, hello, Ronnie. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Fine. You're in Lake Oswego, which is uh, in Oregon. Yes. Uh, which is, how's the, how's the corona affecting you guys there? Well, there are a number of cases, more than a lot of other places, but nothing like Washington State mm -hmm. or New York. But, yeah. um, but I am taking it very seriously, and basically, I'm terrified. It, it, uh, we have no idea how many cases there are. Apparently, I heard one report this morning, I don't know what's, nobody knows what's true anymore, is that the most testing we ever did was on March 5th, and it's gone downhill from then. And until we have widespread testing, we have no idea what we're up against. None. Unless we have widespread testing, we don't know the, the actual numbers. I mean, there are people probably who are getting what they consider minor flus who have it, but they, they don't know it because it's a minor flu. And uh, then it goes away. But in the meantime, they've infected how many other people? That's the what problem. What Dr. Fauci said yesterday at, at, in Congress was that on average, on average, every infected person infects two to three other people. And then each of them, of course, infects two to three other people. And, um, and that does not sound unreasonable to me. What I heard him say was with the common flu, it was two to three. With this one, it's up to seven. I didn't hear that. Yeah, that, that I heard. And I had the TV on all day, so. Yeah, well, yeah, all coronavirus all the time, right? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I've made a list of the things I do and don't do anymore mm -hmm. um, because I'm old like you. And I oh, have no, you're not old like me. You're not old like me. Sorry. I'm much grouchier than you are. Oh, <laughs> you, I just pretend I'm not when we do this. Thing. Um, and um, and I have severely damaged lungs. Yes, you, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that if I get the virus, I will die. Because, and there's just not going to be anything anybody can do with all the stuff I have wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll go, she's a fixer-upper. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, what? I, I didn't follow that. <laughs> uh, uh, no, yeah, they'll just say, well, she's a fixer-upper, and she's not worth fixing up, so let's just oh, let I her see. go. Yeah. Listen, you know, I've read some things that it's going to come to that because we don't have enough beds, and we don't have enough of whatever those things that help people breathe when they're sick. Well, I've forgotten what they're called. And... Um, and the time is going to come, uh, if it's as bad as so many people think, that you're going to be presented with two people, doctors are, both with the virus, and they don't have what's necessary to treat them both. Yeah. So they're going to have to make some awful, awful decisions. My hope that if I'm one of those people, take the younger person. I've had a good life. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I have no complaints, and I'm old. Um, but and and I think we all have to think about those things right now because it's not going to get better anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Fauci also said yesterday that it's going to get worse, much worse. Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, that first time he appeared on camera with the president, he really disappointed me. And he's been a hero of mine going clear back to his work with HIV and AIDS, and. He, that he, in that very first press conference with the president, I think it was at the CDC or maybe it was the day before, you know, he talked about how much the president was doing. Well, that was bullshit then. And, um, and he really disappointed me um, in doing that. And yeah. as that was the head of the CDC did the same thing. And mm -hmm. it just, uh, I, did you watch the speech last night? No, I didn't. I, I, we, we were going to watch it, and then we forgot about it, and it was so quick that it was over by the time we got to it. Yeah, it was only about 10 minutes. Because we like to watch the president give those speeches because it's the only real comedy we get in our lives right now. Well, this time it's not funny. 
and um, and a lot of people are dead already, and a lot more are going to die. So I have a bunch of rules for myself. Yeah, like? Um, well, I wash my hands. That's the most effective way is washing your hands. Um, you should save sanitizer for when you're not near soap and water. Mm-hmm. And I'm down to, as everybody else may be in the country, I'm down to, you know, a little travel size. And that's mm-hmm. it. You can't find it for any amount of money. You can't find the proper kind of hand sanitizer anymore. Um, I'm not going out unless I absolutely have to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking about, yesterday I had a CT scan at the medical center. How'd that go, by the way? Like a CT scan goes. I mean, you lie there, they take a picture. Yeah. Um, there's nothing more to say. But, um, but I'm thinking that if I don't have to have anything done to me that requires medical equipment mm-hmm. that I want, anytime I've got an appointment with a doctor, I would rather do telemedicine now because, hey, it's a hospital. It's, it's five hospitals or more. And that's where the sick people are. <laughs> so. Well, you you can imagine. I uh, uh, you know I last week had a procedure at a hospital, and that scared me. Not because of the procedure, but because of the uh, the possibilities of the coronavirus. You know, where, where is it going to show up the most in a hospital? You know, um, um, but and, uh, you also don't want to use up their time, maybe if. You know, there are people who are really sick, and we don't have enough capacity in our hospitals. So, Well, I have, I have a, a, a thing with my eye where I have to have the lids. Uh, don't tight. do that. No, tight. Well, tight. Don't pull on it. <laughs> well, have, have to be tightened up because they, they're, they're drooping, and it, it, that bacteria gets in there and everything. And it has to be fixed. It's a medical, it's covered my by My neighbor insurance. just had that done. Well, but... I have before I do it. I have to go over to Mount Sinai and get an eye test, mm-hmm. and I am not going to do it till this thing has kind of abated itself because I'm. Ta- well, that may I, be many months. Well, I'm then I'm going to wait many months because I'm not going to go over there and take up their precious space when they could use it helping other people with something very serious. You know. You know well, another thing that I'm going to do now. I just made the decision yesterday, I guess, <clears throat> is that from earlier in my treatment for the things that are wrong with me, there was a period of two months where twice a day I had to give myself injections in my abdomen. Mm-hmm. And I have a big box left over of nitrile gloves. Yeah. Um, and so I, I put some in my handbag and I'm going to leave some in the car because last time I was at the market, they have a dispenser with um with things to clean your hands with it and mm-hmm. the, and the and the basket you're pushing yeah it was empty the last time i was there and uh so everybody else is finally using it which is a good thing yeah um but uh i'm going to take the gloves because whatever i'm buying around the store i don't know who's talked it you know touched it or coughed on it or whatever so i'm going to use those and throw them away afterwards i uh, I have a, uh, a, a tradition. Uh, I guess it's a. It's almost. A, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's. A, it's. It, it's a habit that I have when I go to any doctor's office. That when he's not looking, I steal a pair of gloves. Oh. Uh, you know, because they got they had thousands of them. Okay. They pay for those. Yeah. That goes on everybody's bill. They. they, they they take them, I put them on, they take them off, they throw them away, take them on. Throw, but anyway, I just do it as tradition. I haven't collected that many. I have maybe four or five pair of them. And now I have a reason to use them, you know, uh, and and um, and try and go out and find those gloves anywhere right now. Go on Amazon. I bet they're not available any longer. Yeah, there's not, and people, and if there's anything funny about this, and I don't find mm-hmm. any of it funny, it's that people are hoarding toilet paper, apparently. There are several news stories, and and there's, everybody keeps saying there's plenty of toilet tissue. Why, why would people be hoarding toilet paper is what I couldn't figure. I heard that too, and I went. Because well, they think it's going to run out, like hand sanitizer. Toilet paper is not going to run out. 
you know. Well, that's what other that's what they're saying in the reporting, but people don't believe it. But that's that's a very important point, Alex, is that. None of us believe anything coming out of the government. So if the reporter got that information right. from some government employee, why would you believe it? Everything out of their mouths is a different story. None yeah. of it makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think that that is almost the most dangerous thing that's going on, is that there's no way to believe anything the government says right now. Yeah. Well, they say you can't find hand sanitizer anywhere. That it's, it, well, that wasn't what I was discussing. No, but what I'm saying is, is, is things like that. I mean, is there, are there any other things people are hoarding that they don't need to hoard, I guess? Uh, I mean, when I was at the supermarket two or three days ago, all the shelves where there are like surface cleaning products, you know, things you squirt on the counter and okay. wipe it down. Yeah. That sort of thing. Those were empty. Those were all gone. Um, there were... All that places where hand sanitizer would be were all empty. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped on the way home at the drugstore, and they had none um, of any of that stuff either. So, you know, you do the best you can. Soap and water is best. And if you don't go to other... I mean, what this is going to do to the economy is terrifying. Oh, terrifying? It, it already it, is terrifying. That's what I said, yeah. I thought. Um, but, I mean, it's going to get much worse. I mean, Fauci is not just about the disease, <clears throat> but how people function in the world. A whole bunch of sports teams are going to stop playing. The NAB has said they're not playing the rest of their season. Well, there are several more since they said that. Yeah. And, um, and they move, even the debate between Biden and Sanders has been moved from Arizona to Washington, D.C., they announced this morning. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, God, I can't even keep up with all the things that, you know, who's going to go to a movie? I'm not going. Well, if I, want, if I really wanted to see a Broadway show, now's the time to do it because there are seats available for every performance at half price. Well, you know? yeah, I wouldn't. No, um, I wouldn't either. You know, uh, if I were, if I were uh, 30... I probably would, you know, because your chances of survival are very good. But at our age, you know, I feel that this disease has targeted me, you know, well, targeted see, back you. Up, back up a minute to 30-year-olds. They have to be just as careful as we are because next thing you know, they're sitting next to you on the subway. Oh, right. No, of course. And so it just because... 30-year-olds don't die and 80-year-olds do yeah. doesn't mean they should wantonly go anywhere and not worry about it. Now, we realize that the age category, older, they usually say, what, 70 and above? Something like that, maybe 60. Some said 50 and above. I don't know. You can't yeah. tell because the government says different things well, every day. It, it, although the mortality rate is higher among that group, or say for you and I, uh, how much higher is it than... For younger people. Way higher. Way higher. Way higher. Okay. I don't remember the numbers and you can't trust them. But what, you know, a couple of responsible science types that I saw on television, it is much, much higher. And that's because our immune systems don't function very well at our age, that we have all kinds of other underlying diseases. I have two very serious diseases that... Yeah. You know, uh, and most old people, more old people have something underlying, whether it's heart disease or yeah. cancer or yeah. whatever, than 30-year-olds do by, by magnitudes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it's much, much higher. But we don't even know. I mean, like you said, you heard Fauci say seven people are infected by every infected person. I've never heard that number, but I have heard two to three. Mm. Um and it's everybody's responsibility to keep this, do everything possible to keep this at bay. Somebody said this uh, in the last 24 hours on some program somewhere that, yes, if you're younger, you can say, well, my chances of dying from it are not higher. But the chances that you could give it to your grandparents and they could die from it are higher. And I said that. Yeah. And, and, and that's the point to remember is that even as 
uncompromised as you may be, you're not, you, you, you have the ability to compromise other people. And that's it, plain and simple. And that's the horrible part about this particular affliction <clears throat> is because, you know, since we don't have the testing, we don't know who has that and who has the flu. And now what they've said is if you had the flu shot this year and you get something you think is the flu, it might be the coronavirus. But if you haven't had your flu shot, then it could be the flu, you know. Uh, I haven't heard that. Yeah. Don't 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 say that as no, gospel. No, I heard that uh, from. Uh, well, I think it was, you don't know who did you hear it from? I think and how I heard it from. Fa I heard it from Fauci actually. I didn't haven't heard that. Yeah. I've been reading no, no, his but interviews. I, I've, I've heard that 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 uh, the that you're compromising other people if you have it. No matter. It doesn't matter if you're young and whether yeah. you have what until you know what you have, which nobody knows because there's so little testing. Yeah. Um, you know, you just, you have to be as careful as everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really up to us because nobody can do anything except just people walking well, around in their lives. Well, I'm not leaving it to our president. I'll tell you that right now. You know. Um, and, uh, and I don't understand the testing problem. I don't understand shutting down. He's shut down all travel to the U S from most European countries except the UK where he owns three golf resorts. Well, let's look at one other factor. If stopping people from coming here from countries that have the coronavirus, all right? Pretty is, much all it, countries it, do. Well, is going to prevent it. Then how come when we did it initially, very early on, we made that travel restriction from China, and apparently that didn't stop it, and nothing, no, travel restrictions aren't going to stop it now. Um, it's here. It's multiplying every day. Yeah. I mean, they've got the National Guard keeping people in a one-mile area of New Rochelle, for heaven's sake. Yeah. Um, because they have such a high incidence of it. Um, so it's here. I mean, you know, it's not going to, you know, maybe it, it would stop a few people. But in general, the numbers go up by a couple of thousand here every day of infected people. Mm hmm and as um and what yeah that's from interior you know what there's a there's a phrase for it i keep forgetting but community community infection or something like that yeah yeah um and so i mean the thing is though that it's up to each of us to be responsible yeah to do everything we can to ourselves not get it and not to pass it to someone else Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, and I just hope, I mean, something like this hasn't happened since 1918. Right. At least we have more information about health and staying healthy than we did back then. Yeah. Um, but we still don't know how many people have it and how long it's going to go on and what it's going to do to the world economy. Um, and you know, Let's just assume it goes for a few months and then tapers off and pretty much stops. Mm -hmm. By then, everybody is out of habit of going to sports games and movies and theater and kids not going to school, all tele telelearning, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, no gatherings of people that are more than a couple. I'm not so sure. Um, I want to go to a gathering of even... A few people, because you don't, you can have the virus for a while. I don't know how long, maybe a few days, two or three or four days before you necessarily have symptoms. So just because somebody isn't sneezing and coughing doesn't mean they don't have the virus. Well, my, uh, my wife, you know, works for a Chinese company mm -hmm. and um, uh, they're uh, making everybody work from home right now, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, what, however, one of the people, her big boss, um, came in from Hong Kong the other day. And I don't know how he managed to do that, but his family is in Singapore and they can't get out. They can't, they, you know, he can't meet, he can't get to them. So he's going to have to wait for this to be over with. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it's, it's devastating on so many different levels. Uh, and on top of that, the stock market has taken a hit that, you know, it, it, this president, 
if he had the confidence of people, could have stemmed off a lot of that sell-off. But nobody trusts him. That's the well, problem. He, he also, it's not only not trust him now particularly, but he also doesn't know how to rally people to the necessities of what we need to do. He doesn't know how to do that. I think because he doesn't he, he doesn't have an empathetic bone in his body. He doesn't see this as danger to people. He sees it as a danger to him from being reelected. And also his bank uh, bank account, which is not that great to <laughs> begin with. He has one. Though. If he I mean, has one, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, he's stealing so much from us, you know, so maybe that's how he keeps going. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, you think about um, FDR, nothing to fear but fear itself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, you could think of was one of JFK's speeches that was so amazing. I don't remember which one. Um, th that in times of big troubles, you want the leader to be there to reassure you, to be doing the right thing, to explaining what is, be do yes. is being done and what our responsibilities are. And he does none of that. Well, I mean, it's a matter of rallying the nation, making the nation feel comfortable with the situation, say, yes. This is serious. We all have to do our part, but it's manageable. And, you know, here's how, here are the steps we can take. But there's no sense of confidence that you have in this man because he lies with everything he says. Even his followers know he lies. So there's no confidence there. And this lack of confidence is the proof of the lack of confidence is the way the stock market has reacted to this because he's done nothing to abate the fear. You know, so. Do you think that this is going to change that solid 40% that net, no matter what he does always sticks with him? No, but I don't think they're the ones who are going to elect him or not elect him. Uh, and it isn't going to be the, the lefties. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go too far. Back up to that. Why? I think they are. No, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish with what I'm saying. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, there's 40 percent that uh, is with him. It may be less than that. It could be in the 30s somewhere. And there are those who are against him, which may amount to another 40 percent, 50 percent. But there's a 30 percent in the middle, and that's going to be the difference. And it's a matter of how those people feel today as opposed to when they voted the last time. Which brings me to my final question of the day, because we probably could go forever on this. <laughs> which, which of these... Two guys, do you think, has the best chance? Biden. Biden? Okay. I agree with you. I agree with you on that. I think, uh, I think if, if uh, um, Bernie were to I, be... So, I think more so now that the coronavirus has exploded mm -hmm. here, I think more so Biden has the better chance now because I sense in myself, and I think is probably happening to other people, because God knows I'm not unique, is that I want everything to settle down. We've got a terrible, terrible problem. It's going to last many months, and it's going to be hard to get through. Yeah. But following that, I, I, I just want it to be quiet and take care of everything yeah. that needs taking care of. Yeah. I don't want the constant sturm und drang of... of of Trump, I, I just, it exhausts me even to think about it. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just feel that uh, Bernie would be doing everybody a favor if he gave up now and we could get on with things. But let me just mention one thing and then we'll go. It was said that today Biden is going to make a statement on the coronavirus and that it's not going to be political, it's going to be presidential in nature. And somebody said this thing has given Biden the opportunity to look presidential, mm -hmm. you know. So who knows? I this think may, it's one of the most important things. This but, may be the big uh, audi audition. Anyway, it's starting to look dark where you are for some reason. The I, sun's very bright. Very bright. Well, it's on one side and on the other side you're looking darker than usual. Oh well, the windows are on one side and they aren't on the other. We should have had you turn on the light. Hey, listen. Good talking to you. You're looking healthy. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, and uh, here's looking at you and hoping your CT scans are okay, and uh, we look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks.
Okay, take good care.